Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our third lesson on the sixth topic of Form 4, which is called Mains Electricity. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that your future will shrink or expand best on the sacrifices you make today. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at domestic wiring, which starts from um, uh, the local a transformer which is actually a step down transformer because you can see it has more number of turns in the primary coil as opposed to the fewer number of turns in the secondary coil so that particular voltage or current is first of all going uh, to flow through a fuse which is about uh, a fuse of 60 amperes from there the current will be directed to what we call uh, the meter so in the meter we'll be able to detect uh, the amount of current flowing through in terms of kilowatt uh, that is hours so we, we are able to detect the amount of power that is in kilowatt then hours so from the meter the current will flow to what we call the consumer fuse box which consists of uh, the lighting circuit we have the water heater the cooker then of course we have the uh, power so from here this is what we call the main switch so remember, the main switch is simply a double pole switch which disconnects both the live and the neutral wires simultaneously, thereby disabling all the circuits in the house when necessary. So you can see it is a double pole because it consists of uh, the live wire part, then we also have the neutral uh, part which connects, so the neutral part actually connects to the neutral uh, bus bar, then of course we have the other pole which is connecting to the live wires of the lighting circuit the water heater the cooker and also uh, the power so remember the lighting circuit usually takes the minimal amount of current of about five amperes depending with the uh, the demands of the electrical instruments in that particular house the water heater takes about 25 amperes the cooker takes about 30 amperes then the power uh, takes about 30 amperes which is used actually to for example to charge the mobile phones the televisions and any other electrical instruments then uh, you can see we are saying that a bus bar is simply an electrical conductor that makes a common connection between several circuits for example you can see this is a neutral uh, bus bar whereby all the neutral wires of the water heater the cooker and the power will be connected to this particular neutral bus bar so a bus bar is simply an electrical conductor that makes a common connection between several circuits then of course you also have the earthing connection which is usually connected to the uh, power the cooker and also the water heater remember for lighting circuits most of them do not need uh, the earthing terminal because they are dealing with a small amount of current for example of about uh, five amperes only but the cooker and the water heater and also the power they must be connected to the earthing terminal to uh, reduce any possibility of electrical uh, shocks so we are saying that the live bus bar is simply a brass bar uh, connected to the live wire through the main switch then the live wire of each circuit is connected through a fuse so remember a fuse is simply helps us uh, to reduce any dangers of electrical shocks because a fuse the fuse wire will melt out uh, whenever excess current is flowing through because it will cause the fuse wire to melt out uh, due to overheating then the neutral bus bar is simply a brass uh, bar to which all the neutral wires of such circuits are connected so the cooker the power and the water circuits they are usually connected to the neutral bus bar and of course also the lighting circuit then also the cooker the power and the water heater circuits are connected to uh, the earth terminal to reduce any electrical uh, shocks so then the earth terminal this is the terminal uh, this that is the terminal is earthed through the water piping or through a thick copper uh, bar which is buried deep in the earth so the earthing simply reduces any possibility of electrical shocks next we look at distribution of power from the consumer uh, unit so this is simply a typical house wiring system so from the main switch which consists of double poles that is the neutral and of course the live pole of course the neutral when you close this particular main switch uh, the neutral is going to connect to the neutral wire here to the neutral uh, bus bar then of course we have the live wire is going to connect to the live of these all other electrical instruments so when the main switch is closed this is the live wire remember all uh, switches are supposed to be connected on the live wire to reduce any possibility of electrical shocks 
So you can see this is the lighting circuit, which is about five amperes. So this one, uh, the live wire of this lighting circuit will go to the bulbs, which of course are usually connected in parallel. We shall see the reasons for that. So the lamps in an electrical circuit are supposed to be connected in parallel to each other. There are advantages for that. So this is what we call the lighting circuit, which has um, the bulbs, of course, which are producing the light. Uh, so you can see that these particular bulbs, each and every bulb is also connected to the neutral uh, wire. So remember, uh, the circuit will only be complete if the life wire uh, is being completed through the neutral wire. So you can see all the bulbs are connected to the neutral wire. This bulb is also connected to the neutral wire. Similarly, this other bulb is also connected to the neutral wire. So that when this particular main switch is closed, the current will be flowing through a complete uh, loop. So from the live wire, it goes through uh, this particular bulb, then it comes to the neutral wire. Similarly, for the second bulb, uh, the current will flow through uh, this particular fuse, then it goes, of course, when this particular switch is closed, it goes through the bulb, then it comes through the neutral wire. So all the bulbs must be connected to the live wire and also connected to the neutral uh, wire. Then, of course, from there, the bulbs, that is uh, because for the case of the bulb, it is carrying just some small amount of current, then there is no need of connecting it to the earth terminal because it is dealing with small amount of current, therefore, the dangers of electric shocks are very small. However, for the case of, for example, the power connection and also the uh, cooking system, which uses a large amount of current, for example, of about 30 amperes, then there is a high risk of electric shocks. That is why you must connect them to the earthing terminal. So you can see also we have the main switch. We have the live wire here, which is going through a fuse uh, of about 30 amperes. Then the current flows through uh, to the heating element. So this is what we are calling the uh, cooking circuit or the cooker circuit. So the cooker circuit takes a, a huge amount of current of about 30 amperes, which must flow uh, through the neutral wire. So you can see the cooker circuit is connected to the neutral wire here. Therefore, the circuit is complete. The same cooker circuit is also connected to uh, the earthing terminal. So remember, the cooker circuit or the heating uh, elements, they are taking a large amount of current. Therefore, they must all be connected to uh, the earthing terminal. Terminal. Similarly, for this particular case, it will also be connected to the earthing terminal as shown in this particular diagram. Now, there are some questions that you need to be aware of. For example, let's look at the lighting circuit. So the first question is that why is it that the bulbs uh, should, should be connected in parallel and not in series? What is the advantage of that? So we are saying that in the lighting circuit, bulbs are usually connected in parallel and not in series. The reason is so that they operate uh, at the same mains voltage so that is the first reason why we connect our uh, bulbs in uh, parallel and not in series because when they are operating on the uh, same mains voltage it means each bulb is receiving the same amount of current and therefore each bulb can be switched on and off we are using its own independent switch so the reason is so that they can operate at the same mains voltage and so they can be operated independently so you can see for this particular bulb it can be switched off without affecting the operation of the other two bulbs so each bulb has its own switch when it is connected in parallel therefore they can be operated independently however if you connect the bulbs in series then it means if you switch off one of the bulbs the other bulbs are going to uh, blow off or to go off so the advantage of connecting bulbs in parallel is that uh, they operate at the same mains voltage so that simply means that they can be operated independently that is if one of the bulbs goes off the rest will actually continue working and like for the case of series whereby they use the same uh, switch so if you switch one of the bulbs off others will go off for the case of series connection then switches are usually fitted on the live wire so that when the switches are off no appliance is at full potential or full voltage so this prevents the dangers of electric shocks so you can see all these fuses are connected on the live wire and not on the neutral or on the earthing terminal so all fuses must be connected on the live wire so that when the switches are off no appliance is at full potential or full voltage so this prevents uh, the possibility of electric shocks so since the lighting circuits carry re relatively a small current, the wires used is relatively thinner. So the wires that are used in the lighting circuit are usually thinner as compared to those used in the cooker circuit. The reason being the lighting circuit deals with a small amount of 
current therefore we just need some small uh, wires because the resistance actually is low however for the case of hooker circuit because they are carrying a, a large amount of current so we need to reduce uh, the dangers of uh, that is the power losses through resistance so a thicker wire has a larger cross-sectional area hence more number of electrons per unit area hence less resistance so uh, for the case of a circuit which is using a large amount of current for example the cooker circuit which is using about uh, 30 amperes we need to use very thick wires uh, so as to reduce uh, the electric losses through resistance remember thicker wires have a larger cross-sectional area meaning that they have more number of electrons per unit area hence high conductivity or simply low electrical resistance lastly we look at the operation of a two-way switch circuit whereby you are saying that a two-way switch circuit is convenient in lighting of staircase so you can have one of the switches at the upper end of the staircase then the other switch at the lower end of the staircase similarly you can have also uh, one of the switches at one end of the corridor and the other switch at the opposite end of that particular corridor so how does it operate so when the conduct is made at the poles a and uh, b so the light bulbs why so you can see when we connect pole p uh, to point a then pole q to point b you can see the circuit is complete because the current is flowing through the live wire through a uh, that is Q to B to A then to P, then it flows through the bulb, then it goes back to the neutral wire. Therefore, the circuit is complete. That is why the bulb is on or the bulb lights. Then the bulb also lights when the conduct is made at point C and D. So remember when you, sh you shift A to point C, then when you shift B to point D, we are also going to have a complete circuit. Why? Because the current will flow from the life wire to point Q. Remember B has been shifted to point D, and uh, A has been shifted to point C. Therefore, you are going to have this complete path from live wire to Q to D, then to C, then to uh, P. So remember, A has come to point C, then B has shifted to point D. So we are having this particular complete path of current flowing through uh, this particular circuit. Then it goes through the bulb, then it flows to the neutral wire. So we are having a closed circuit, therefore the circuit is complete and therefore the bulb is also going to light. So remember points A and uh, B are shiftable, they can move to point C, then B can also move to point D. So when B moves to D and A moves to C, uh, this particular path will be complete. So the line uh, AP will come to point PC and the line uh, QB will come to point QD. So when the circuit, whenever the circuit is, the path is complete or the circuit is complete, the bulb will light and uh, we are going to have some light on this particular bulb. Also, uh, to put off the bulbs at point P, so at this particular point P, uh, the switch is made to make contact at C. So we'll simply take point A up to point C. So you complete this path while the conduct at point Q is maintained at point B. So remember when we are maintaining this one at point B, then we are shifting this wire from point A up to point C. So there will be introduced a gap between point A and uh, that is A and P. So this particular gap will ensure that the circuit is uh, uh, open and therefore no current will flow to the bulb, therefore the bulb will be switched off. So to put off the bulb at point P, the switch is made to make conduct to at point C while the conduct at point Q is maintained at point B. So you are moving A to point C, so there will be a gap here, but you are maintaining Q to point B. Therefore, the current will flow from the live wire through point B, then when it comes here, it will find a gap because A has moved to point C. So this gap will ensure that no current flows through the bulb and the bulb will be off. So put to, to put on, again, the bulb at point Q, the switch is made to make contact at point D. So we are going to move B to point D such that the current flows from Q uh, to D, then of course uh, P and C are still being maintained, uh, so the current will flow through. So to put on again the bulb at point Q, the switch is made to make contact at point D while the conduct at point P is still uh, maintained at C. So remember we have moved A to C, so this path is complete. So if we move B to point D, this path will also be complete. So the current flow from the life wire through Q, D, C, uh, P, then flow through the uh, our bulb, then to the neutral wire, hence the circuit is actually complete. So that is how a two-way circuit actually operates. So one of the switches will be placed at point P, the other switch will be at point Q, so that so that you can switch on and off using independent uh, switches. Then lastly, we look at the 
uh, that is the circuit breaker and the fuse. Remember we discussed about the fuse uh, in a given topic actually in Form 3. I think it was uh, the heating effect of the electric current, so you can just review. We looked at the various parts of that particular switch. It is a chapter that we covered in this particular channel. Just review to Form 3 work, you will find that particular lesson. So a, a circuit breaker is simply a magnetic device that breaks the circuit through an electromagnet when a certain amount of current is exceeded. So a circuit breaker, we, dis we learned about it in Form 2. I think it was a topic called uh, Magnetic Effect of an Electric Current. It is a chapter that we covered in Form 2. We discussed more about the operation of the circuit breaker. So in case you aren't familiar with that, you can just review our lessons in Form 2. We discussed the circuit breakers under applications of electromagnets. Then a fuse is simply a wire of low melting point which melts out uh, when a certain amount of current is exceeded. Again, we discussed that in a given chapter in Form 3. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that your future will shrink or expand based on the sacrifices you make today. So the quote is reminding us that if uh, we want a better future, we must start to invest in it today through the sacrifices we make today, through the decisions we also make today. So we can also uh, positively sacrifice for our future by spending our time wisely, by feeding our minds with positivity, by choosing a good company of friends who can improve us, by also improving our character, by making the right decisions that will uh, propel us towards a brighter tomorrow. And we can also uh, improve our future by also making the sacrifices of taking action instead of just complaining about everything and giving excuses. And lastly, recall that you are either improving or ruining your future every day based on the sacrifices, the choices, and the decisions you make each day. So ensure that your decisions, your sacrifices, and your choices are propelling you towards a better future. Thank you for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.